say. The other day a guy came up to me asking if I had attention deficit disorder, ADD. And I think that's an obnoxious question. I don't know if I do or not nervous tested. But I realized what I should have said. If anyone asked that question, just say this. Say, maybe I don't have attention deficit disorder. Maybe you have horrible storytelling syndrome. <laughs> Or unnecessary detail to see. Um, I don't have any cool addictions. I kind of wish I had cool addictions, because it's cool to have cool addictions. My addiction really is a computer. Like I'm on a computer, I'm on the technical name on the internet. The other day something horrible happened, my internet went down. And that's scary for someone like me. And I couldn't fix it, because that would be awkward, because I'd have to call my next door neighbor. I'd be like, hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm the guy who steals your Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, you, know that? Maybe it's possible. Yeah. you know, and I can't even do that, because I live in a big building, and I don't know who it is. I would have to knock on every door in the place. I'd be like, yeah, hi, sorry to bother you, but I have any chance at Action Tech 1? No? Sorry. Are you Action Tech 1? Action Tech. Oh, who Lexus? Oh, thanks for locking it, bastard. <laughs> We'd be a good neighbor, pal. Yeah, it takes a village. <laughs> Wouldn't piss on me if I was drowning. <laughs> That's what people are. I moved within LA. LA is an incredible city. It's so diverse. A lot of people don't even know other neighborhoods. I was living, this is true, I was living in a condo in Santa Monica by the beach, a million dollar condo with my now ex girlfriend. Thank you. I had to move, right? Uh, she thought I should move when we broke up, right? She thought I should be the one to move across town because she owns the place. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a good argument, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I have to admit. You know what I mean? So I moved 10 miles inland from Santa Monica to a neighborhood that doesn't have a name, but people call it Dangerous Adjacent. <laughs> I moved from a neighborhood where like almost everybody has a gardener and a maid, right? To a neighborhood where almost everybody is a gardener and a maid. <laughs> I'm the only guy in my zip code with a social security number. <laughs> Some people groan when I say that. They're like, I don't know, is it okay to laugh at that, honey? I'll call Hector the gardener and find out. <laughs> My friends are so cynical, but they're so mean, you know what I mean? My friends are so mean, they're just like, dude, you don't do what? What? Where you, where you move to? Oh my god. And I'm like, no, it's a good neighborhood. Dude. It's a lot better than you think. There's a lot of tourist helicopter rides at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like I'm shooting people. It's weird. It's just weird, man. I don't know what to tell you. I, uh... Oh, and people get so worked up about politics, but they're not like logical, they're not rational about it. People say things like that. Illegal immigrants are taking all the jobs, we gotta build a big fence around the border. It's like, you know what, you know what? You know the more important question is, who's taking the really, really good jobs? <laughs> jobs that you guys want. You know who? <laughs> College graduates. <laughs> they need to build a big fence around the universities. <laughs> Some people are like, Adam, that joke is racist against college students. And I'm like, college students aren't a race, they're a species. And they should be locked into a big zoo and forced to drink alcohol and have sex on camera. We already have that, it's called Girls Gone Wild. Are you doing Girls Gone Wild? That's awesome, I love that. I don't care for breasts! Naked ones. It's all right, brother. I got a friend who gets angry about the global economy, about jobs and stuff, you know what I mean? Like jobs would be around in the globe. And I'm not kidding, I swear it's true. He gets really pissed off when he calls an American company, he gets the Indian guy on the phone. You know the Indian guy in India? Yeah. Right? It's like you call Bank of America, it's like, what are people calling a big American name is Bangladesh? And that guy is so polite. That's they are insanely polite. He's too polite for Americans. You know what I mean? Like, hello, um, Mr. Grobman, may I call you Mr. Grobman? Oh, Adam, sir, Mr. Grobman, sir, President, Governor. Your Highness, Your Highness, Judge, Judge, uh, Grobman, sir. I'm like, hey, David, Grobman, listen, listen, I'm wearing Donald Duck flip flops and a jock strap, okay? <laughs> and you know I have $53 in my account. You know it, okay? You can call me dude. <laughs> 
country has gotten a lot more politically correct, though, in our lifetime. It's okay, it was very incorrect for a long time, you know? But it's kind of gone, sometimes it gets a little kooky with the PC stuff, you know? The other day, I called the headquarters of the Ku Klux Klan in America by accident. I was worried because I misdialed. I got the KKK voicemail, I swear. This is what it said. Why aren't you calling the headquarters of the White Knights the Ku Klux Klan of America? Preserve it your white race, heritage, and language. Espanol, okay, my <laughs> 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 You can't join us, Paco, but you can wash our sheets. <laughs> your wife can, you know, you really shouldn't be doing that kind of domestic work. Here's the thing, guys, I don't think there's a long-term future for the KKK Latinos. That's not a good match. It doesn't really make sense, because in Spanish, KKK means what, what, what. <laughs> <laughs> that is way too many questions for Hickory. I gotta get out of here. Just real quick. Uh, you got fantastic comments coming up. This is such a fun night. I was gonna tell you, I have a girlfriend. She's fantastic. She couldn't be here tonight. But uh, I was tell you this: that uh, I'm nervous about marriage. I'm not, I'm not married yet. But I really respect people who are married. I mean, God bless you if you're making it work. I just think marriage is an institution that, you know, has a questionable future. I'm just saying statistically, of all my friends in my age range, seriously, right, they're either never been married or they're divorced, or they are married, and I get this phone call. Robin, dude, dude, listen. I'm the supermarket, the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. I'm standing eight feet away from me. What do I do? What do I do? I'm like, Dave, you know what? First of all, dude, you're married. Second of all, what supermarket and what aisle? I'll be over there in five minutes. You know, and here's the thing. You know, is it, is it, is it uh, Ralph's? Because I stand a chance. <laughs> Get a phone number, right? Is it Whole Foods? I don't got that kind of game. <laughs> Get a couple Whole Foods, girl, you know what I mean? I can't, you know, I can't get a number with an $8 peach nearby. I can't, you know, I'd have to take a yoga class and cleanse my chakra first or something. Is it 99 cent store? I'll walk out of there with six fucking wives. <laughs> Yeah, is that store, I'm like big love. All I'm saying is you gotta know your supermarket level. Everybody's got one. And you guys have been so much fun. And uh, if you stick around, always come back to the Lavina Joka. And uh, here